Hi guys, good evening to one and all. Uh, myself Chaitali, host for this session, the webinar on load testing with Gatling. Uh, this is the emerging technology uh, topic. So we'll start with the introduction to the today's webinar. Before that, let's uh, have a small introduction about today's event sponsor, Synergetics. Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company, which help any industry to get their relevant technology solution and helps to be on the top of the competition. We are not only restricted to the trainings, uh, but also our Microsoft certification trainings, which help every individual professional to be on the top of this competitive world. Here are some of the master solution offered by Synergetics that are onboarding solution, reskilling solution, certification, certification plus add-on, cloud adoption, architecting, practice playbook, latest technology training and emerging technology training. Today's webinar is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in Microsoft Cloud technologies. You just need to follow a meetup group, which is an emerging technology community for all. You need to just install the meetup app on your phone and follow our community. So you will be get update about our event, meetups, webinars and workshops. Now small, co small code of conduct that you all need to follow. Please note that you can't take a screenshot of the recording and can't do, uh, can't take, uh, cannot take the screen, uh, screen presentation rec uh, screenshot. If you need, to, need the recording, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. YouTube channel link will be posted in the chat box later. Now our agenda for today's webinar load and stress uh, testing, integrating the load stress testing in developed pipelines and more. Today's speaker for the session is Mr. Mahindra Shinde. Mr. Mahindra is an accomplished training consultant and a technology lead for DevOps and Java practice at Synergetics. Also, he has worked extensively with uh, technologies like Spring and other Java framework. Go ahead. The upcoming ATT webinar is on Azure Auto Manage, which is on 8th of October from 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The registration link will be provided to you in the chat box, so you can register to that. Then we have upcoming session on PL200, which is full day session. You can enroll for that too. The registration link will be provided to you in the chat box. Also follow us on the social media platforms to get daily updates regarding the webinars, workshop and more. Also, as it's an humble request to all the participants to submit their feedback on the feedback form, which will be provided to you by the end of the webinar. Now I would like to hand over the mic to Mahindra sir. Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chaitali. Good evening, guys. My name is Mahindra, Mahindra Shinde, and Chaitali has already introduced me to all of you. So today, this particular session about Gatling, a load testing tool. OK. Here we'll see how Gatling will help us to perform load test, stress test on our application. Testing is actually a very important aspect of uh, software development or overall software industry. And uh, before we proceed with this particular event, OK, I, I just want all of you to miss. I just want to know like how many of you are from the testing background? How many of you are from, let's say, DevOps and developer background? So uh, can you all please uh, type your overall uh, IT experience in a chat window here. I hope you all are able to access the chat window. In Microsoft Teams, now you have already uh, joined the session. Uh, you should see a chat window or you should see a button to 
access chat window. It should be somewhere here. OK, on the top bar depends on like whether you are using a Windows desktop uh, application or logged in from a browser. If you have logged in from a browser, the, the button might appear somewhere else. Yeah, sure. So just introduce yourself. Now there are a few things I want you to put here. OK, people have already started putting it in a chat window. That's very good. Nice of you. So when I say introduce yourself, I was expecting these things. Name, then what role you play, whether you are a developer, whether you are a tester, QA, or whether you are any other role you have in your organization that you specify. Experience in years. Overall experience in years, whatever it is. And what is more important is your expectation from the seaman. OK. Fine, so. Gayatri, Dharamvir and Devesh have already. OK, they have already mentioned something here. Dharamvir has 10 years experience and Gayatri has 16 years of experience in software automation testing. Oh, that's great. Fine. So Gayatri, have you used any other automation tool for load testing? Maybe like uh, JMeter you might have used. OK. OK, Devanshu has mentioned everything here. Performance testing, engineering. Why should move from JMeter to Gatling? Yeah, fine. I was expecting that because as soon as you say about load testing, the so-called standard load testing tool is JMeter. Fine. Yeah. Just a minute. OK, so I guess we should get started. People are writing down their experience and their introduction in a chat window. So I guess meanwhile we should get started already. So as you can see on my screen right now. I will be putting all the notes in the left hand side panel here and on the right hand side panel I have this drawing board. This is where I will explain you all the concept. OK, so. First of all, let's just uh, go the standard way and use the presentation and then I'll give you a demo. So let's see what basically is a Gatling. Gatling is a load testing tool 
as you might have guessed already. A load testing tool which can be used for integrated development environment. Oh, I guess I made a spelling mistake probably. OK, so Gatling is a tool that allows you to perform load testing. Now there are already lots of standard tools available to do that. Rather, one such standard tool, JMeter, is actually, you can say, a very widely and very popular tool already. Gatling is a new entry in the load testing tools. Gatling can be used with integrated development environment. That means it is possible for you to run Gatling from your IDE. Guess what does it mean? It means forget about just the QA or testing people using this type of tool. You can even integrate it right there in your dev environment and you can even have your developers run those tests right from their IDEs. You can configure it in any kind of development environment. Like for example, for a Java developers, they can use IntelliJ IDEA, they can use NetBeans, and they can use Eclipse. In case if you don't want to be dependent on IDE, Gatling also supports build tool like SBT, Maven, Gradle, and lot many other uh, package management tool as well. Another interesting feature about Gatling is it could be integrated with DevOps workflows, CI CD workflows, you can integrate it. And just like other load testing tool, Gatling can also simulate multiple virtual users with single thread. Now, please remember one thing. This is the point where Gatling has better performance compared to traditional tools like JMeter. With a single thread, you can simulate multiple virtual users. OK, now uh, we do have quite few people here who have used JMeter. Can anyone explain me how multiple virtual users are simulated in JMeter? Is it dependent on how many threads your CPU can provision at a time? Hello? That's that's right. Like uh, every virtual user is using the multiple, like multiple users are using the multiple threads there. And multiple threads. Yes. Right. Yes. So one of the primary concern with something like JMeter is that it puts a limitation and many a times you will end up. Having a requirement of, you know, multiple machines running parallelly create some kind of cluster like environment where JMeter is running on multiple machines to simulate the required load. It may means your single machine may or may not have enough number of CPU threads or may not be actually powerful enough to simulate those many number of requests. Please remember, unfortunately for us, JMeter becomes so popular and it create a kind of a monopoly that there were no new improvement made to it. Those people who are using JMeter for at least eight to nine years, tell me one thing. Is there any difference in JMeter that you used eight years before and JMeter that you are using now? Yes. Forget about just the user interface. User interface has remained same more or less, but there are no much new differences, right? Internally, they might have used something like uh, uh, some of the basic uh, threading API, which is available in Java because JMeter is based on Java. So it uses all the uh, concurrency features which are available in JDK. But anyways, it's very slow evolving tool and Gatling is giving it a kind of a competition, right? By providing a solution that is even more better with performance. But there is another aspect of Gatling where it actually makes a very, very, very big impact. I'm talking about reports. Now, let me show you something about Gatling reports. I have run some Gatling process earlier and my report are ready in here. Let me show you results and there are few results here I have. 
Gatling results are actually generated in HTML format, HTML pages. Let me open one such uh, Gatling report here in my web browser and show it to you. This is the colorful report generated by Gatling. Can you see that? Hello? Yes, we can. Right? So you will notice here Gatling not just perform the test, but it creates these type of reports and for easy access, the reports are converted into HTML documents with charts and graphs and all those details. OK, you can even click on it. And select the details here, like these are the number of executions, number of requests that was made, all the 10 requests and even redirects were captured properly. It will even capture HTTP redirects. There is nothing new about it actually. Now these are all the data and these are all the reports that it generates. OK, so it's a tool that not just perform the load test or it not just test your application for the performance, but along with that it also prepares all those type of reports. Now this is a global report. OK, you can see the overall data in here. If you click on a particular request, you will get to that particular request details. So it creates very nice type of reports and everything. And there is one more thing here about Gatling. Gatling is now available in two different flavors, Gatling open source and Gatling enterprise. Here we will be talking about Gatling open source, but the enterprise version actually have their own cloud based, uh, you can say uh, environment setup. What if I tell you you do not have to install Gatling runner on your local machine? You can run all your tests on cloud on Gatling's own servers, so you don't have to set up anything on your local machine. You just need a small tool that will simply, you know, kind of test your application from a remote servers running somewhere on Gatling cloud enterprise version I'm talking about. Anyways, now. Code based performance test. Another interesting thing is. Just like JMeter, Gatling also has a recorder. You can, you know, kind of start a Gatling recorder, then open your browser, visit few pages, and Gatling will record all that thing. But guess what? All that recording is actually a code. Gatling actually supports three different programming languages Java, Scala, and Kotlin. Scala and Kotlin are basically Java, JDK based, JVM based languages only. Default language now is Scala. So if you know programming a little bit of it, you can, you know, kind of what I normally recommend, record the test and after recording is done, go and check the steps generated by Gatling recorder. You, if required, you can optimize it further. You can go and edit those uh, lines of code yourself. These are some of the benefits of Gatling. So let me revise again. Gatling is a load testing tool which can be used for integrated development environments. That means you can launch Gatling from integrated development environment like Eclipse. Gatling can be integrated with DevOps workflows. Have you used any kind of CI CD tool by the way? Anyone? Right, we are using Jenkins as a CI and CD for the hardness tool. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So Jenkins, Azure DevOps, or what we used to call TFS, uh, Bamboo Server, or uh, you might use something like Travis CI, Circle CI, you name it, and support is already there for it. Rather, I don't actually go with any kind of extension or something. What I have is I already have my own container image, Gatling container image which is ready to execute. You just have to pass the simulations to it. It will take them and it will run them and prepare the report for you. You can run it as a shell script, provided Docker is installed in your build agents. So anyways, there are other extensions available, so you can simply go to your Jenkins marketplace and find the required extension for it. So to give you an example. Let me check if I can find some extensions here. Jenkins. Marketplace. 
here it is. And let's see if there is a Gatling plugin available here. Yeah, I found it. You will notice there is already a plugin available which was uh, released some two years back, and this integrates Jen uh, uh, Gatlin simulation reports into Jenkins. And this is how you can configure it as well. So support is already available. And not just that the reports will be visible or reports can be collected from your Jenkins workspace as well. You will get a link here after your project has successfully built. After your Jenkins job is successfully built, you will get here a line like get cat link like this. Fine. Let's go back. So we have lots of extensions in here, and this is not all. If you go with Azure DevOps, for example, Azure DevOps Marketplace. You will find Gatling extension for Azure DevOps also. So extensions for Azure DevOps. Let us search for Gatling. So whichever DevOps tool you might be using, go to its marketplace or go to its, uh, you know, plugin center or extension manager, whatever you call it, and you will find an extension available that will allow you to integrate it. Wait a second. This is something else. This is Lodium. I wanted Gatling. OK, this is something else, some other custom extension it is. Anyway, don't worry. If you want to launch your Gatling test from the command line, I have created a container image to use that. Actually, I was first trying to use existing Gatling container images made by other users, but uh, you know, I found them little uh, difficult for me to use. So what I did, I simply end up creating my own container image to do the same. This is my container image I have created for Gatling open source local runner. Just need some volumes to be created folder that you have to provide and run a command similar to this and you will be able to run your Gatling test or load test directly from the command line. OK, so it's already built. Don't have to worry about it now. How do I get Gatling? Please remember whenever I'm talking about Gatling, there are two different version of Gatling. And in this session, we are talking about Gatling, Gatling open source. Can you see the button here for open source Gatling? Yeah. Whereas you also have an option of Gatling Enterprise, where Gatling will run on its own cloud environment, cloud-like environment, and you will be just your own, uh, sorry, you will be just like any other tenants. It's a multi-tenant setup, like there are servers running Gatling and you are just one of the many other customers there. You can also have self-hosted Gatling Enterprise, uh, provided you are using some existing cloud environment, like uh, your organization is already on Azure, for example, or AWS, you can host Gatling Enterprise server on your own cloud setup as well, or let it get managed by Gatling. Choice is yours, whether to use self-hosted or whether to use Gatling hosted server. And needless to say, enterprise version of Gatling is not free. Anyways, let's keep, go back to the open source part. Now, open source version of Gatling, open source version of Gatling, you can download it from their website, gatling.io. Now, I don't have to download it because I have already done that long time back. And on my system, Gatling is downloaded and extracted into my D drive. So let me show you my D drive here. This is Gatling. Inside Gatling, I have Gatling charts, this bundle 3.5.1. I guess 3.5.1 is too old. I should use the latest version, right? What do you think? Am I right? Latest version is 3.8.4. So let's download it then. Oh, wait. I have this bad habit of, you know, closing browser windows or applications instead of just minimizing them. Open source Gatling, download now. Let's see how much time it takes. 
it will not take more than few seconds depending upon internet connection speed. Yeah, it's version 3.8.4 and I can just go and download this. Let us extract it. I will extract it to my D drive Gatling folder. So inside D drive Gatling folder, I did extract everything now. And let's minimize this time, not close. Here it is, the latest version 3.8.4. I don't like folder names with big uh, uh, letters or uh, folder names with lots of characters into it. I would like to keep my folder name, my path small, so I will do this trick. OK, now Gatling is in D drive, D colon slash Gatling. And you will notice there are folders like pin, pin, conf, lib, result, user file, and license file. Anyway, result is where all the HTML results will be generated. User file is where you will have to keep your simulations. Now, please remember simulations. There is a sample simulation already given for you called computer database. OK, you can use that. Fine. Any questions so far? Hello. OK, great. We'll continue then. So how do you install Gatling? Gatling can be installed as three, four different ways. You can install it as an independent tool. Now, when you install it as an independent tool, what does it mean? It means you can use Gatling Bundle. The one that I have downloaded just now is called Gatling Bundle. Gatling Bundle is independent tool, you can say. In order to run Gatling Bundle, you need to have Java 11 or any version of LTS version of Java need to be installed there. Without Java, Gatling bundle will not work. So you need to have JDK 8 or 11 or 17. These are uh, LTS version of Java. I have JDK 11. Gatling bundle can be used directly from the command line. Now, if you have Gatling bundle installed, it's, there is no installation as such. It's just a zip file that you need to extract. Another way you can use Gatling is you can use Gatling right there inside your Java project. So let's say you have a Maven project or you have a Gradle project, either Maven or Gradle project. And inside Maven and Gradle project, Gatling could be just any other dependency with its own plugins. Gatling as dependency and plugin. And guess what? You can launch your Gatling test directly from Maven and Gradle. You can integrate it right there inside your build tool. And if you think configuring it inside Maven is little too complicated for you, or if you are not a tester but a developer, you can also integrate it with Eclipse ID. It's not just Eclipse. Gatling can be integrated with lot many different types of tool. OK, here again, it will be dependency with plugins. Gatling plugin for execution, Gatling dependency for the code level API access. So you have all these different options. You can run it as a bundle. You can run it directly as a Maven or Gradle dependency, or you can run it inside container. I normally prefer, now this is my personal preference, I use it instead as a container. Container instance. Anybody heard about containers, Docker containers? It's easy to launch, you know, kind of uh, wrapper for your applications. Make sure that your application is totally running in isolation containers will allow. So it is your personal preference, which one you prefer. Now, if you are a QA, now like here I can see lots of people who have joined here in this session, they are all QAs. So for QA people or tester testers, these two approaches are preferred, whereas developers will generally prefer these two options. 
Is that clear? Hello? Yes. Okay, fine. So Gatling allows that. Gatling allows you to run it with multiple different ways. Now you have to pick your choice of running Gatling. Now here, if you are a developer, you can use these three approaches for testers or for general purpose use. You can just use it as an independent tool. And in case if you are a developer, now I know there are no developers in here. Is there any developer here in the session? Anybody, any developer here? No, fine. No worries. Yes, I am. Developer. Yeah, you are a developer, <laughs> right? You will yeah. notice Gatling is available on MVN repository. And this is the latest version of Gatling 3.8.4 that you can include in your Maven project like any other dependency. Gatling high chart, test high chart artifact version number 3.8.4. Now, this is where Gatling is totally, you can say, overshadowing JMeter. JMeter is always an independent tool. JMeter is something developers will never even have heard about or know how to run it. Okay, if you are using, if you are a developer and still claims that you also run JMeter test, then you are playing a dual role of tester and developer both, right? But in short, we don't, we don't launch it from build to like Maven. Here we are able to do that because your Maven project will consider this as just any other dependency. One more thing, by the way. Do you know when you download this Gatling bundle, the download is actually happening from MVN only? Let me show you one thing. Can you see this? This bundle? Hello? This is where you actually download it. Even when you download it from this page, it is actually, download is actually facilitated by Maven. Fine. Let's not talk more about it. It's something for developers purpose. Anyways, you can get this from this link. Now, this is how you can record the test quite easily. Gatling has its own recorder. I will show you a demo, don't worry. Let's go back to the Gatling for a time being here because uh, there is one point about Gatling that I wanted to uh, discuss here. I didn't mention it in the presentation, unfortunately, but I think this is a very important point to make. Gatling, how Gatling is different than other recording tool. Now we have people here who have used JMeter. How do you create a simple test in JMeter? Anyone? Oh, wait. I made a mistake. I don't even remember how I used to launch JMeter window from the command line. Oh, there is no CMD file. Then it must be batch file. Am I doing it right, Gayatri? Yeah, this is JMeter. And even though it's a good tool, but this is how you define your test in JMeter. You define the test name, provide the command, add all those details like HTTP request, all that you have to do it from the GUI. Am I right? Yes. Gatling don't provide any such thing. In Gatling, it simply says that record your actions and get done with it. I will show you how to use that. Don't worry. Now, let's say if you have created a 
if you have created a test using JMeter, do you know how your JMeter tests are actually internally stored as? Let me show you. This is one sample JMeter test. Tell me what it is. Tell me. It's an XML document. Can you see that? Hello? Is my screen with? Yes. Okay, Gayatri yes, has given a, a thumbs up. Okay, fine. So you will notice load testing tool like JMeter, which is actually a direct competitor to a Gatling. For those people who don't know what is JMeter, JMeter is a very popular load testing tool. And it's very popular and it's very old. JMeter used to record all the tests or use XML file to describe the test. Gatling, instead of using XML file, Gatling use dot Java or dot Scala code. OK, and Gatling has its own API. So what is benefit here? If you are a developer, you can literally write your test cases right there inside your Java project. OK. So you can treat it like a unit test, by the way. Unit test is the only type of test developers are supposed to write. Am I right? OK, so. This is code based approach. You can. Write test cases. In. Number one, Java. Number two, Scala and number three, Kotlin. For Kotlin, there is a limited support right now and limited scenarios only. OK, so you can actually write the test cases in a programming language. Now there are lots of benefits of this. You can actually make use of programming construct like if else statements, loops, arrays, etc. Number two. Optimized. For better performance, performance of tool itself. Number three. Colorful reports. OK, all the reports are generated as HTML documents. Yes, and there is a cloud version enterprise edition available. So that you don't have to have lots of servers to run the test. You can run them all on cloud, but enterprise edition will support that. Is that clear? Also, compared to JMeter, it's correct. It's comparatively easier to containerize Gatling. Fine. I, I guess all these points are clear to you. Yes. Now, let me show you some of the simulations Gatling creates. If you go to the default installation directory, you will see there are some default simulations already created. There is one computer database simulation already there. Let's open the computer database simulation here. Can you see this is basically a Java code? Hello? Yes. Now in this Java code, now I don't know whether you people know Java language, but let's try to treat this as a random code. Here it is trying to read some data from a CSV file search.csv. It is called feeder. This is used for input. Then there is a builder which is going to execute this request home request and at home request it is going to just make forward slash means request to the home page. Pause for one second, feed the data, execute search. So you will notice you can actually write your uh, HTTP test here like this and you will be actually here treating your load test like a unit test. You know uh, there are tools like J unit N unit. Have heard about that? Anybody here heard about J unit? Yes. J unit is unit testing tool and this is where you have concept of assertions and you can just you know expect a value and if you don't get expected value, you can just raise an assertion error, which means test is failed. You can do something like that with load testing also. So you will notice here the EXEC here. Look at this part. Don't worry if you don't understand the Java code here because here we are not. Evaluating this code as a developer. We are looking at it as a tester, so you will notice here. 
we are performing an operation where we are expecting HTTP response of current request to be response 200. 200 response means what? It should be done. 200 means ready or done, whatever you call it. And if it is not this, then test is failed. Is that clear? Now, do not worry. You don't actually have to run this type of simulations or create the simulation classes manually. Don't worry about that. Instead of that, you can use a recorder. Sorry. Resources. Can you see the search.csv file here under resources? So under user file, you need resources and you need simulation. If you use any extension or library, you can include the jar file here, drop it here. Otherwise, just resource and simulation is enough. Am I clear? So is there anybody here who's trying to download Gatling right now on his or her machine? Let me tell you what are the prerequisites. The prerequisites are number one, Java JDK. I will recommend JDK 11 or 8. Recommended 11, but if you don't have 11, but if you have 8 installed, it will work. That's fine. Number two, I want you to have your environment variable, path environment variable already updated with JDK path. Okay. ENB path. must be configured for java.exe. So that means if you run Java double hyphen version, it should report either Java 11 or Java 8, something like that. So environment setup should already be done. Other than that, there are no other prerequisites. Just like JMeter, even Gatling depends on Java. You need to have JDK installed. Just a
Okay, great. Fine. So let's see how do we launch Gatling now. In order to launch Gatling, I will just drop down to my command prompt or my PowerShell window, whatever it is. And from my terminal window, I will now go to the D drive. Then I'll go to the Gatling. Oh, wait a second. I, I guess I'm already inside Gatling. No, I'm in a wrong folder. I was inside a, its, calc, its competitor. Gatling, pin, and let us launch Gatling.bat. Please remember there are two different script files, one to launch Gatling runner and one to launch Gatling recorder. So you will have to choose between a runner or a recorder. Let's run runner right now. So let's say I want to launch Gatling.bat. When you press enter, it will launch Gatling runner. Now this is my Gatling runner. It is actually asking me what to do. So here I'll say, OK, I just want to run the simulation locally. You will notice options over here. This is one that you will use for Gatling uh, to run Gatling test locally. This command you can use to package the Gatling simulation to Gatling Enterprise Cloud and run it there and get the results here. That means your machine will simply act as a client. OK, an actual test will be performed on Gatling Enterprise Cloud. What is benefit? It will not be using your CPU and RAM and network. It will run somewhere else on Enterprise Cloud, but this is not for community users. This is for only those users who have Gatling Enterprise Edition uh, or subscription purchased. Then package the simulation for Gatling Enterprise, but don't run it yet. OK, so obviously I don't have the enterprise account, so I will go and run it locally. After I choose this option, Gatling will now go and check if there are any kind of simulations available in its user config or user files folder. Let's wait for it. Hey, wait a second, something. Yeah, I sorry, my mistake. I should have pressed enter. It was asking me to add this description. I don't want to provide any description here. It will just go and pick that, uh, you know, simulation which was already there and it has launched now. It's running the simulation, whatever is written inside the simulation, and I'm getting these results. It's running it right now. But don't worry. Fine. Now it has also created a report. Let's do one thing. Let's copy this report path and try to open this report in a browser. Here it is. So these are the things. So these are the 94 requests which are completed in less than 800 milliseconds. Then there are seven requests that completed in more than 800, but less than 1200 milliseconds. You can see all that concept here all that part here. Can you see that? Yes. Hello. 
Yes. Yeah. Right. OK, so this will just do this. This will run and this will create the reports. You can see the reports like request per second, responses per responses per second, number of active users, etc. You will get nice reports in here. These are the stats. You can see all the pages that were requested. Home, home redirect, search page, page 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And you can see all the details that got captured here. OK. Fine, so this is for the simulation which you already have, but what if you don't have a simulation and you instead need to test your locally running application inside it? So how will you do this basically? So to give you an example, to give you an example, what if you already have a local application that you need to test? Gatling has a tool called Gatling Recorder. Gatling Recorder will actually open its own GUI where you have to configure something. How Gatling Recorder basically work? Gatling Recorder will create its own proxy. OK, so it basically works like this. Let's say this is your web browser. This is where you will use the web browser to actually visit your web page, click on the links, follow the links, etc. And then there will be a small proxy configuration you have to do here. And inside the proxy configuration, you need to connect it with Gatling Recorder. Here, Gatling Recorder will act as an HTTP proxy. Now, what do you mean by HTTP proxy? Anyone? HTTP proxy means all the HTTP traffic will actually traverse through that particular object. So I will select it here, HTTP proxy. Port I'm using right now is 8000. 8000 is default port, but in case if there is anything else running on port 8000, you better change it to something else. Then you need to provide the package name. So package, package name and class name is required for all the generated simulation classes. So let me say my package name is demo one. My class name is let's say recorded session. Do I need to follow the redirects? Yes. Do I need to infer HTML resources? Yes. Automatic referrers? Yes. Remove cache headers. I need to remove all the cache headers. I can even choose which language I'm using here, like Java 11, Java 8, Java 17, or do you wish to record the simulations in a different programming language? Let's say Scala. You can choose whichever language you want to use here. I can choose Scala also. I can choose Java 11 also. Then use HTTP method and URI as request prefix. So if you are using HTTP method, let's say get, and if your URI is let's say slash customer, then it should be recorded as a new request. You can select where to keep the simulations. Can you see what all options I'm using right now? HTTP proxy, port is 8000. Package name is demo one. Class name is recorded simulation. Format is Java 11. Use HTTP method and URI as a request prefix. And this is the folder where I want it to be storing everything, all the details. Let's also go to the simulation folder. Under simulation computer database is the package name and actual class name is this. OK, let's see what happens now. I will start the proxy server. Now that proxy server is launched, what I will do now, let me configure my browser to have the proxy configuration here. So let's go to the browser's proxy setting, manual proxy configuration, HTTP proxy, local host, and port 8000. Once this part is. Once this part is done, proxy configuration is done. Let us visit that computer simulation. Web page. Oh, wait. I guess I need to run it on HTTP port, not HTTPS. So, this is the page, and I'm now recording all the activities here. So, I visited the page. Let's say I need to, let's say, get some details about some of the products here. Let's say ARRA. 
introduced in 2020, 12, 20, discontinued in 2022, 01, 01, and a company name is, let's say, Apple. Save this computer. What is it? Okay, there is some problem with the formatting, I guess. Oh, I got it. It was expecting hyphen, not flash. So same error I will get here as well. Okay. So page is working just fine. I can just search for something else here, like MacBook. Find MacBook Air. Here are the details. This is the company name. Save or cancel, or you can just go and delete it. Let's delete one of the record here. Delete this computer. Now all the operations are actually getting recorded in here. Okay, now that it is all getting recorded. Wait a second. Executed events. I can see some event got executed here. But I don't know why it has executed Amazon event. I didn't do this. Let me try again. Let's make sure that we are running HTTP and not HTTPS. It's redirecting me automatically to HTTPS. Shouldn't, right? Nothing is getting captured right now. So some operations I have performed. Stop and save. Let's go and check if it has created any simulations here. You will see the folder created called demo one. Now, do you know why it has created a folder called demo one? Because inside simulation, whatever you have here is the package name. And I'm right, it's not actually able to capture all of that. I don't want to do this additional activity here of HTTPS configuration. And somehow the website is actually going to the HTTP approach. Follow redirect. All is already set now. Uh, can we run the test against a remote server instead of a local host? See, the local host here is the proxy. Getting my point. That's the proxy configuration. Okay. okay, now this is only required when you are recording it. Let me tell you why it is required. What happens is whenever you will visit any website, the, the request will flow through that uh, uh, environment or that proxy environment, and that proxy will capture everything. OK, I guess I made one mistake here in the proxy configuration. Let me fix that. Settings, then proxy, and let's say I'm going to use this proxy for everything, even HTTPS, OK? All the request, no matter whether it is HTTP or HTTPS, should always go through uh, this one. Computer database. Dot. Kathleen dot IO. It's not working with HTTPS. Let's try the HTTP instead.
Oh, wait. Have I started the proxy, first of all? No. Start the proxy. And looks like my browser is forcing me to use uh, HTTPS, but I have to tell it don't use HTTPS. Instead, use HTTP protocol. So. Wait, looks like all modern web browsers won't allow me to do this anymore. I guess I should use a different browser in that case. Let's use Chrome. And let's do the settings in Chrome. Just the same thing. Proxy. Oh, it's actually asking me for the system proxy here. So localhost 8000 is the proxy address. Save. So configure a system wide proxy and let's try this. Computer. Database dot. Gatling dot I. Currently unable to handle the request. I think it's computer hyphen database. Yeah, that's right. You are right. OK. So you will notice here my browser has recorded or allowed me to do this communication and you will notice Gatling recorder has now successfully captured these requests. OK, now this is extremely interesting part because please remember Gatling is also recording some of the Ajax request here. Fine, no worries. This is found. Let us now do one thing. Let us try perform some operation here. Save this. Delete one. And also search for something. Let's say search for HP and delete. So it has now captured all those requests. Now what I will do is I will go back here and look at individual requests that got captured. If you click on it, can you see the request getting captured here? Along with even the request and response body. Is that clear? OK, I guess I should close the browser window. To stop it from recording furthermore request or Ajax request by the way. So all the request got captured and it has also captured uh, the pause like the delay that I gave here. Let's stop and save this. Now everything is stopped. The recording has stopped and it has saved the recording in this particular folder. So let's go and check the folder here. This is demo one and this is the recorded simulation of demo one. Let's see the amount of code it has generated. Can you see this? Hello? Yes. So all the HTTP headers, all of them are defined here using private maps. You can see it here, private maps of headers. All the headers are stored. Now these headers, you will see there is header 9, header 11, header 14, because every request has a different header. So all the headers are declared as a variables in the uh, on the top. And then these are the requests. You can now fine tune it. Remove the request that you did not actually wanted to, uh, you can say capture. Like for example, I never wanted to capture this request, URI1. Can you see that? Hello. So make the necessary changes like that. Let's not make any changes here because it's a Java code. Any unnecessary changes and you might actually end up having some kind of syntax error there. So simulation is captured now. Let's now run it. How to run the simulation now? To run the simulation, we will just go and run Gatlin runner Gatling dot bat. OK. 
for catlink dot pat it is also possible it is also possible to provide some kind of environment variables users equal to 1000 let's run the simulation locally wait now it will ask me to add some description There are two simulations to choose from. I will choose second simulation, so enter number one. Description, I don't want any. Can you see this? Whatever request it has captured in that simulation, it's actually going to run all those simulations now. OK, so looks like. It's generated the report. Let's go and check the report now. It should be right here under Gatling results folder. OK, now this is the recorded simulation. You will see the timestamp is added to the folder name to specify which report it is. And let's open the index page. Index page is one that contains all the report. OK. Now this is the report here and let's see how many active users were there. Can you see the number of active users here? Oh wait, there was just one active user. I guess the configuration that I provided that environment variable is not enough. OK, we will have to go inside the simulation and change it. OK, because recorded simulation will normally have just one user. You will have to go inside the code and change the number of user count. Don't worry about compiling the code. There is no need for you to compile it. Code will be compiled by. JDK, which is already there. Let's scroll down and you will notice these are the scenario builders. These are the resources headers. OK. These are the requests, so you will have to modify the code and make it run number of times or there is one more way to do this. Now this. Gatling has a special config folder. Did you notice the config folder here? Hello. Now there is a recorder config. There is a Gatling config and there is Gatling Akka config. Let's go to Gatling Akka config and open it with any text editor. You can open it with VS Code, Notepad, Notepad++, whichever editor you will like. So actor default dispatch, let's say we want to increase it to 20. So I have changed just one property there and let's try to run Gatling once again. This, this environment variable doesn't work, it means. By the way, it is also possible to specify it that I want it to directly go and run a particular simulation. That also can be done from Gatling config. I'll show you that later. Let's run this one first. There is a trouble with Firefox, but we were able to record everything with Google Chrome. Demo one again. No description.
simulation started. Uh, hey, Sajid, can you please mute yourself? Uh, there is some background noise from your side. Is it great? Please. OK, so here we are now. Report is generated. Let's go and check the report. I'll go and check the report now under results. Recorded simulation. Now I guess this must be the newer one. OK. And as usual, let's go to the index page. And here we are. No, I guess the number of users configuration is something else actually. Anyway, let's see the other configuration now for the time being. And one more thing, I just needed to change my proxy setting once again back to the normal. I'll just go back to the user configuration here. There is Catlink configuration, which is a different configuration file actually. Looks like from configuration, there is no option. Only option would be just to go and change the Java code. OK, there is no option to increase ramp up the users. These are other configurations that you can change for overall Gatling execution. OK, so you can even specify which simulation to load. So like for example, I can say that. Uh, no, this is simulations directory, not the actual simulation to launch. Basically.
looks like most of the way uh, people provide options here for Kathleen, the configuration can be adjusted from here, but uh, there is no selector here for which simulation to launch. Let's do one thing. I don't remember the exact parameter. Let's use the command line help. Gatling.pat, let it launch, and I will use last option show help and exit. So let's ask Gatling how to specify that. So, okay, I want to create the report and run description, extra parameters, package ID. Okay, find this is no, I don't want to provide package ID here. Simulation environment variable, I'm not using any. Simulation ID I can provide, but I guess this option is for Git uh, uh, Gatling Enterprise or a server only. Okay, let's see if there is another option. Yeah, I found it, I found it. Hyphen S, simulation class name. Can you see this? Hello? Yes, we can. Right, so I will use one thing. I will just specify the simulation name directly here. Gatling.bat and simulation name. I'm going to provide uh, what is my simulation name. Let me just scroll up and I'll check that. This was the simulation I need to launch. So let me just copy paste this, press enter, and wait a second. Okay, I need to still select one, two for selecting whether I want to run it locally. There must be a switch to run it quietly as well without asking you for any permission. I have already done this through my Docker uh, container where it will not actually run it in interactive mode. Fine, it is able to run it like this. Fine, it's creating the report. OK. running fine so using proxy server you recorded all the steps and now you captured them and you put them in here okay this is old report i guess i believe this is old report and this one must have created a new report now so again go back to gatling from gatling i'll go back to the result folder and the new re result is getting populated right now. This one, I guess, still working on it. Fine. Yeah, it's done. Should be able to access it now. Index.html. That's the report. Yeah, it's one user only. OK, fine. I'll just go and modify the Java file. Let's go to the simulation and inside the simulation, I'll just going to add one line to ramp up number of users. Oh wait, how can I call it directly here? I need to find a place where I can invoke this method. The code is so lengthy, I don't know where I should put it right now. Yeah, here I will put it. Scenario builder I have created. Scenario builder, uh, scenario dot execute. Now these are the resources. Just a minute. Let's take example of this scenario. Mm -hmm. 
this is a handcrafted scenario. So basically they have used options like repeat to repeat a single scenario four times. OK, try max, max two times try something like password or uh, any HTTP request method can be run like that. OK, I got it. This is a static block that you need to provide. OK, I got it. So I will add it as a static block here and ramp up the number of users. Static block is like this. Curly bracket open close and set up and. Number of users I want is 100. Let's close it and let's rerun it. This time. Run locally. Oh wait. I guess I've used a wrong switch. RM is not run locally. It's something else. I guess I have placed it at wrong place somewhere. I'm getting compilation errors there. Fine. So it is possible to specify the number of users right there in a simulation if you have created simulation by directly editing the code. Now. This allows us to run the load test directly either from the local system or from the uh, remote server. Remote server, it will be then uh, enterprise version of uh, Gatling, which will be deployed maybe on some cloud environment or Gatling's own environment. Any questions? Anyone? Can you try this thing? I will show you what I did ex exactly. The command to launch your Gatling recorder was go to Gatling. Inside Gatling, go to bin directory and just launch recorder.pat. After you launch recorder.pat, what next thing to do is go and capture the recorder. Sorry, go and set HTTP proxy. HTTP proxy host name is localhost. Oh, host name you don't have to set. Port I have set as 8000, right? And after this is done, I then set the system proxy to localhost 8000. That means, please remember this is kind of, you know, a suspicious activity on many of your servers if you try to do that. It is treated as a suspicious activity because you are literally allowing some program to actually view your HTTP traffic. Is that clear? Yeah, so you should better you. You can do it basically on your uh, uh, dev environment. Only. OK, fine. Any questions or do you want to try this uh, recorder right now? Anyone?
OK, now I'll show you the Jenkins part. Uh, but before that, I will just quickly go and launch my uh, entire Jenkins environment in a containers. CD. OK, I will just bring up my Jenkins instance, which is ready to use instance basically. Oh, I should not have launched both the instances. Tomcat is totally unnecessary in this space right now. Fine, no worries. It will get started. Meanwhile, you can try using recorder on your, your uh, system as well. I'm creating a new Maven project here where I will use Catlink configured inside it and then I will launch it from my Jenkins. But before that, uh, let's create a Maven project here. I have some kind of, you know, uh, plugins already installed in here. So I can create Maven project directly from my VS Code environment right here. Why it's taking so long for Maven? Let's create a Maven project. And I can use the arch type quick start or maybe I should use the ready made template. Let's see if there is one. Gatling arch type Maven arch type. No, this will actually be referring to the old one. No, let's create a basic uh, web basic project only. OK, I will just say. Quick start. Maven quick start. The test version 1.4. Com.mahindra is going to be my package name. And name it will be demo one. Wait, what happened? Looks like there is some trouble here. Now, let me just create it manually. From the terminal and creating a new Maven project where I will add Gatling as a dependency in its form.xml file. So here it is getting loaded right now. Generating the project in interactive mode. Fine. Don't worry about this long list of uh, filters. We will be using Maven quick, quick start template. So. Maven quick start. Or oh, let's just say quick start. OK, there are so many quick starts here. And 121. Yeah, OK, I will use that. Fine, group ID is com.mahindra. Artifact name is demo one. And version number 1.0. Yes. A project is created, guys. 
So this is the project. Don't worry about the steps here that I used. Most of the time developers create this type of project using ID like Eclipse, NetBeans or something like that. Now this is the project spoom.xml file where you need to add some dependencies. First of all, this project I'm not going to use Java 1.7. I'm going to use Java 11. So that change I have to do. Number two, uh, you don't need these plugin management anymore. I will just remove this option. This is not needed. And uh, I'll just remove this JUnit dependency. I don't want the unit test cases right now. OK, so this is now a nice, neat and clean application. First of all, in order to use Gatling, there are some dependencies you need to put in here. Now, what are those dependencies for Gatling? You will have to add some dependencies like this. Oh, this is 3.3. I'm using 3.8.4. 3.8.4. I'm using Gatling 3.8.4 dependencies in here. OK, so depending upon what all things you are going to need, you can specify the dependencies here. After specifying all the dependencies, after you provide all the dependencies, you have to also do the plugin configuration. So for plugin configuration, you will go to build. Under build, you will go for plugins. This is Maven configuration, by the way. If you use a different, uh, let's say, tool, you are free to use that different tool in that case. Now, plugin configuration in Maven includes this configuration here. You need to specify the group ID. Now, group ID for Gatling is very simple as io.gatling. Then artifact ID, it would be Gatling Maven, Maven uh, plugin. That's the name, easy to remember. Then you have to specify the version which should match with whatever extension you are using on the top 3.8.4. And now the interesting part, the configuration. This is where you have to specify which simulation you want to run. Simulation class that you need to run. And you need to provide your simulation classes somewhere, by the way. Is that here? Hello? So now, where do we keep the simulation classes right now? A typical Maven project, you will find a project file called a directory called test, where there is a test case written. I will delete this. You can either put it in SRC main or SRC test. Choice is yours, basically. I will put it in SRC main. So let's go and copy that Java class, the simulation class, basically. Lead right. Kathleen. User files. Simulations. Demo one. Recorded simulation. Let me copy this. And here I will paste it. Inside the main directory. OK, let's open this in File Explorer and do the file copy paste operations there. Demo, demo one, SRC, main. Yeah. OK, and then here, let me paste the file. Fine. So finally, I have the recorded simulation here, and package name is going to be com.hindra. Com.mahindra is the package name and recorded simulation.java is the name. So let's copy the class name. Copy relative path. And this is what I'm going to use here in foam.xml file. Oh, wait, it requires a class name, not the path. You know the difference between path and class? 
path will use forward slashes, backward slashes, and uh, package name or class name will uh, contain instead dot. So this is the simulation to launch. Now this project is ready. Okay, now this you can even run locally. You don't even need Jenkins to run it, by the way. In case you know if you have Jenkins, it's well and good. But in order to run this code, what you can just do is you can run it directly with Maven itself. Gatling execute. Use Gatling execute command or Gatling test command. OK, to run the simulation. I guess using Gatling test might not work because. I have put this file in a wrong folder, I guess. Let me check. I'm not sure. It's now downloading all the extensions and plugins and what is it? Okay, here it's saying no plugin found. Why is that? Let's validate the project. First of all, build is successful. MVN. Gatling. There is no such thing specified. Life cycle phases are validate, test. Okay, installed. Something missing in our boom.xml file probably. It looks like I need to download the dependencies first of all. So let's say MVN package. MVN package should package the application first of all, compile it and all. Okay, looks like there are multiple errors in my recorded simulation Java line number. 17. Where is line number 17? This looks like there is some kind of error in this code and it's not able to fix that. Let me do one thing. I will just use another simulation here. Computer database simulation. What I will do is. I will use this code. And put it here. There are already 10 and 2 users, 10 admin and 2 users created. Code is already there. OK, but then there would be a problem with search file. Don't worry, I have a solution for that. SRC main resource. I have to copy the file in that place. So. Let's go back to the resources. Copy search CSV file and let me put it in my demo folder. Demo, demo 1. And inside my demo one, I will go to SRC main resources. And the file should be here. So it can connect the file. Let's see now, MVN package. Should be able to compile it. Well, 
once you have configured the file, running the file becomes easier later on. Looks like it's still failing. Gatling, I guess the plugin name has changed or somehow on my system, it's not able to download and install the required set of plugins. OK, but how to run it then? In case if you have Jenkins instance running, you just uh, make your Jenkins build this project and run the Maven command from it. Wait a second, I guess I should just check whether, whether the. Gatling extension here has any kind of updates. Gatling. Maven Gatling plugin. Wait a second, what is the exact name here? For boom.xml, it is Gatling Maven plugin, okay. Gatling Maven. I can't. Yeah, here it is. Gatling Maven plugin. I can see that. And I'm using, I guess, the older version 3.8.4, but looks like there is actually no 3.8.4. Okay, I got it now. Let's use a different version. Let's say 4.1.0. The version number here is missing. Point one point zero. Let's try that again. OK, now it is trying downloading all the extensions. Maven Gatling plugin is getting downloaded now. Earlier it didn't work because there was actually no version of Maven Get, uh, Gatling plugin with version number 3.8.4. They had 3.0 and then directly 4.0. There were some errors, I guess. New instance creation, there were some errors in invoking this method. Lambda expressions are allowed only at source level 1.8 or above. What is the source level set for this project? Java compiler, Maven compiler source 11, Maven target 11. How about I just set it to 1.11? Sorry. OK, looks like it is looking for all those resources in test directory and not the compiled directory. 
there is some problem with the code. Maybe the code generated with a different version of Java and uh, I'm using different version of Java to run it here. OK, it looks like yeah, it is Java 11 only. I'm not sure why it's not uh, running it. It's giving me some kind of code level errors. Constructor not getting called and all. Unresolved compilation error. Lambda expressions are allowed only on source level 1.8 or above. We already have set the Java compiler source target to 1.11, so it should not have that problem. If I set, let's see. Fine. Any questions? Any queries? Anyone? Hello. OK, I guess the other terminal window is also over. And let me quickly check. If my Jenkins is up and running. Yeah. That's right. Local host. My Jenkins is running on port 8080. Sorry, not 8080. 8000. OK, here is my Jenkins. Looks like just like a normal Jenkins instance, I need to also get the password. This was the initial password. This is a typical Jenkins installation, so I'll do one thing. I will manually select what plugins to install. And here. OK, there is no plugin for Gatling right now. That's fine. No worries. Let's just continue with the selected plugins first. I don't know why it is launching this. I was expecting it to give me the pre configured version of Jenkins. While the setup is going on, let me just minimize this and go back to the Mavenized project here. OK. Looks like it doesn't support this uh, environment here. Unresolved compilation. Still the same. Maven compiler source. 1.8 Maven compiler target also 1.8. In Jenkins, you will have to install the right set of plugins to support Gatling, basically. Invalid target release 1.11. Just 
this has to be Java 11, not 1.11. Anyway, so basically you can integrate it with your own build tool like uh, uh, Maven, for example, configure it inside it. Add your test cases or add your simulation directly to the uh, package like this. And then you are ready to go to launch the test from the Maven. You will run MVN Maven Gatling and then test command to launch it. OK, it's just installing. Meanwhile, in order to actually run it inside uh, Jenkins, you will have to convert your source code into a Git repository so that you can set up the pipeline. Anyway, we will skip the Jenkins part here because it's taking too much time anyways. And we will stick to the Maven project only. OK. Gatling has a ready-made Maven project, by the way, that we can use instead of using this Maven project here. OK. There is a sample Maven project available for Gatling documentation page. This is the Gatling's own source code repository, and you will see there is a small demo available, sample demo code available on GitHub, which you can use. Now this demo code, you will see it has pom.xml file, and inside the pom.xml file, they have all the configuration already defined. OK, you can use this demo directly from the machine. I guess my internet. Yeah, this is the pom.xml file and you will notice uh, compiler level it, uh, here. They have set it to 1.8. I, I also set it to 1.8. I don't know why it didn't work in my case then. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Let's do one thing. Let's copy this code and download this from the local machine. Let's go to the Gatling demo and clone the repository. OK, done. Now that it has imported, what I will do now is I will now add here. Wait a second. Gatling Maven plugin demo. I guess I used a wrong repository URL. Terminal. Hit clone. Insert. Gatling Maven plugin demo. Fine. Let's go to Gatling Maven plugin demo. This code here. Let's try to build it using Maven command. MVN package package command will simply build the project, but not run any test cases. And you will notice there is no target folder here. Yes, and let's try Gatling test command now. Maven Gatling test will simply launch the Gatling test simulation here. You can see it's downloading the required plugin. OK, they are using updated version 4.2.7. I was using 4.1.0. It is installing the extension once again. Maven is funny, means you change the version number and it has to download everything again. OK, you can see it is now launching the simulation. It's mentioned in here. Now it is launched from Maven. 
Now, once you launch it from Maven, integrating it in any DevOps pipeline becomes a lot more easier. It's because you don't need any special tool or extension as such. You can just run it using the Maven command itself. And then if you are using tool like Jenkins, you just have to pay attention to one small fact. You should go to the target folder and copy the artifact from the target folder. Now, which artifact you should be looking at? You should be looking at a target folder with another subfolder called Gatling, which must contain your report. Can you see the report name? Hello? And to make the things even more easier, it will create a text file last run dot txt, which will tell you what was the last simulation or what was the last report. Can you see that? Yes, use that folder and that folder you can just, you know, go and copy the content of that folder and make it available for download or just store it or for, uh, forward it to some other uh, uh, shared location or external storage where you want to keep those reports. Is that clear? Is that fine? Now this is something easier for you to try. Go to the repository here. You just need to have Java and Maven installed in your machine. You don't even need Gatling bundle because this project will use Gatling as a Maven dependency for itself. And these are the instructions given here on how to run it. Oh, there are no instructions, sorry. How to run it? You just have to run command Maven Gatling test. Can you try? I would recommend you to definitely try this. Only thing is you need to have these two things installed in your machine. Java and Maven. Or else just download the Gatling bundle and run the simulations from there itself. Is that fine? Is that OK, everyone? Hello? So that's it. Any questions you have? We'll wind up our session here. Thank you, Mahindra, sir, for the session. Also, anyone having any question, please go ahead and ask, or else we will wind up the session by now. Any questions you can put forth in the chat box if you have any question related to the topic. Also, I have shared the feedback form. The link has been mentioned in the chat box, so do fill out the feedback form. Share your feedbacks on that link. OK, thank you. Thanks to all. Have a great weekend.